Hi, my name is Peniz Azizi. I'm a biology student from University of Tehran. This is the second video. In this video, we're going to talk about encephalitis, meningitis, enteroviruses, cell junction, and the evidence of neurological damage of the coronavirus. Okay, so let's take a quick view through ncbi.com. As you can see, the above notification of the site for getting the latest information, we have to redirect and click on the given address. Okay, so if we search neurological damage in COVID-19, yes, we can see subsequent relevant essay. So now we're going to talk about how this coronavirus can affect the CNS. But before that, we have to know a little bit about encephalitis. Encephalitis is inflammation of the brain. The severity can be variable with symptoms including headache, fever, confusion, a sniff neck, and the mating complications may include seizures, hallucination, trouble speaking, memory problem, and problem with hearing. Viral encephalitis are the most common type of encephalitis and often occur with viral meningitis. So, let's see what is meningitis. The meninges are arranged in three layers. The layer that actually touches the brain and spinal cord is called the pia mother. The spider web-like middle layer is called the arachnoid mother. The outer and toughest layer is called the dura mother. Cerebrospinal fluid, which also protects the brain and spinal cord, flows between the meninges and over the surface of the brain. The most common cause of viral meningitis is a type of virus called enterovirus. Other viruses that cause meningitis include varicella zoster, influenza, mompass, HIV, and herpes. So, what are these viruses actually do? Virus travel through the bloodstream to the brain, where they cross the border between the bloodstream and the brain into the cerebrospinal fluid. The viruses spread throughout the cerebrospinal fluid and infect the cells of the meninges. The meninges become inflamed as the immune system begins to fight off the infection. So, encephalitis, encephalitis viruses first cause infection and replicate outside of the central nervous system, CNS, most reaching the CNS through the circulate, circulatory system and minority from the nerve ending toward the CNS. Once in the brain, the virus and the host inflammatory response disrupt neural function, leading to illness and complications, many of which frequently are neurological in nature, such as impaired motor skill and altered behavior. Before everything, we have to know for viral encephalitis, the virus should pass through our blood-brain barrier, and let's take a quick view of our blood-brain barrier.
The blood-brain barrier, such as other blood barriers, is a remarkable anatomical adaptation. Its most striking structural feature consists in endothelial cells, tightly joined by tightened gap junctions. These structures bind the cells side by side through several proteins, including connexins, clodin 5, and ZO1. Thus maintaining the barrier's integrity, parasites cover about a third of the capillary surface and surrounding glial cells named astrocytes support these capillaries with their food processes. This capillary bed in the human brain has a total length of approximately 600 kilometers, with a surface area of about 20 square meters. It is permeable only to some molecules, such as nutrients entering the brain, or waste products, hormones, and excess neurotransmitters that leave the brain. Only a small number of drugs are able to translocate it to. To be able to do so, these molecules require lipophilicity, a size smaller than 500 daltons, and evasion of mechanisms of active extrusion. Only now, because of the size of the virus, could pass easily through our junctions. Which junctions? So, let's take a look about cell junctions. When cells come in a close contact with one another, they develop when cells come in close contact junctions. with one another, they develop and specialized intracellular junctions, that tight junctions, anchoring junctions, and gap junctions. Tight junctions seal Jensen cells together tightly with one another, sort of, sort of like a zipper, and form a barrier that cannot easily be crossed. Anchoring junctions connect neighboring cells in particular spots. They did not seal the two cells together. In anchoring junctions, internal plaques attach to the subskeleton are joined by intracellular filaments. This creates a sheet of cells that is strong but flexible. Gap junctions connect neighboring cells with the protein channels, allows for communication, and also for a transfer of small molecules and ion. As I mentioned in a previous video, coronavirus could easily bind to ACE2 receptors by its spike protein. So, we are going to talk about the evidence of distribution of the ACE2 receptors in the human brain. Okay, there is an essay which is about evidence of COVID-19 virus targeting the CNS, tissue distribution, host virus interaction, and proposed neuropathic mechanisms. So let's zoom in important parts of this article. In short time following the outbreak, it has been shown that, similar to SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19 virus excludes the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptors to gain entry inside the cell. This finding raised the curiosity of investigation, investigating the expression of the ACE2 in neurological tissue and determining the possible contribution of neurological tissue damage to the morbidity and morality caused by COVID-19. Here, we investigate the density of the expression level of the ACE2 in the CNS and host virus interaction and relate to relate it to the pathogenesis and complications seen to the recent cases causes resulting from the COVID-19 outbreak. A recently study posed in MedRxiv has reported neurological manif manifestation in COVID-19 in the current outbreak that in involved 214 patients of which 78, it means 36.4% had 
patients has neurologic manifestation which affirm our rationale of the neuropathic potential in COVID-19 virus. The presence of the COVID-19 virus in the general circulation understandably enables it to pass into the cerebral circulation, where the sluggish movements of the blood within the microcirculation could be one of the factors that may facilitate the interaction of COVID-19 virus spike protein, which ACE2 expressed in the capillary endothelium. Subsequent budding of the viral Particles from the capillary endothelium and damage to the endothelial lining can favor viral access to the brain. The movement of the COVID-19 virus to the brain via the cribriform plate close to the olfactory bulb can be additional pathway that could enable the virus to reach and affect the brain. Additionally, the finding like an altered sense of smell in an uncomplicated early stage of COVID-19 patients should be investigated thoroughly for CNS involvement. For conclusion, there is some, co some case report about the first cause encephalitis associated with coronavirus which International Society for Infection Disease has been published it. Case 1 is a 24 years old man. He has never been in foreign countries. He felt headache, fatigue and fever. Upon arrived at the hospital, he had obvious neck stiffness. Blood investigation showed an increase white blood cells on the f on the further lumbar puncture examination his cerebrospinal fluid was clear and colorless and the initial pressure was gather was greater than 320 hdo millimeter he was transferred to the ICO with a clinical diagnosis of meningitis and viral phenomena. Brain MRI was performed 20 hours after admission to the ICO. These findings indicate right lateral ventricular and encephalitis mainly on right mesial lobe and hippocampus. So, we claim that this case is important because this case shows that the unconscious patients are potentially infected by SARS-CoV-2 and might cause the horizontal infection. In order to and the pandemic of coronavirus disease, the diagnosis of the disease must be prompt and not overlooked any finding. Finding to the sus suspected patients in the first step of a preventive measure against the pandemic. It should be kept in mind that the symptoms of the encephalitis or cerebropathia may be first indication as well as respiratory symptom to find the hidden coronavirus patients. Thank you for your attention.